Hello everyone, my name is Eugene from www.dcmotorcontroller.net and uh, today I would like to try to repair a daughter board. This is my second video. On the first video we tried to troubleshoot and repair a uh, digital motor controller. Uh, in this video we're going to try to repair the daughter board which normally is uh, not repairable. It's this little board. Uh, I was uh, searching online and I was able to find some uh, microchips that are installed on the daughter board. And uh, we're going to try to replace those chips and uh, see if, uh, if that will resolve our problem. So let's try it. Okay, let's review our board again. Uh, we were able to test uh, the MOSFET transistors and opticouplers. Today we're going to be testing the uh, daughter board. As you see, I'm going to zoom in here. On the daughter board, usually there are uh, two microchips. I have actually desoldered one of the microchips already. I had a hunch that the U2 was the the uh, the microchip that was not working so but we still have the first one in place which is right there we're going to be soldering the u2 the second microchip and i think that should solve our problem okay here's our board and uh, i have partially inserted the chip in the board it's kind of hard for me to show you on the camera but i'm going to show you and uh, you want to make sure that when you enter that chip in there, you have to make sure that it goes all the way in. We're going to look at the pins and see if all the pins are in place. And look like they all came out. So, this is good. Now the next step is uh, soldering those pins in place. Okay. For soldering, I'm going to be using a third hand. It's a little device that I bought from Radio Shack. It's uh, it's literally called a third hand. It helps you hold the board in place. So both of your hands available to either hold the solder or soldering gun. Okay, we're ready to solder, and um, make sure that your soldering gun is uh, clean and you have a extra solder that you're going to be adding to the board. And here we go. Okay, uh, we have finished soldering and uh, the next thing is to test the controller and see if that microchip was in, in fault and see if our controller is going to work. Okay, I've just plugged in the controller and um, what I need to do is uh, turn the potentiometer and see if the light bulb will come on or not. And uh, looks like nothing is happening, so most likely the second microchip needs to be replaced too. Okay, uh, to replace the microchip, uh, we need to desolder it. There are multiple ways of doing this. Uh, you can use a pump that sucks out the solder, or you can use a braided wire. My preferred choice is using the pump, so I'm going to show you how to desolder the microchip using this uh, solder pump. Apparently I had to pick a better camera position to, to show you this better, so we are continue doing this.
Okay, looks like we're done. Okay, after we desoldered the microchip, we need to pull it out of the board and uh, we need to pry the microchip out. Uh, be very careful when you're prying it out. Uh, make sure that you don't break any other components around the microchip. Okay, I pulled one side out, now the second side. The simplest way to clean the holes is uh, use a uh, half a millimeter drill. I just put the drill in the hole. And pry it open. Okay, we've cleared all the holes. Now the next step is to put in the microchip and solder it back in. And I'm uh, placing the chip in the, in its place again. And you can tell that chip is in. And we have soldered both chips in place. Now uh, we need to test if our board is working. Okay, I've plugged in the board and we have replaced the chips on the daughter board and we're ready to test. So uh, I'm gonna turn the potentiometer. And uh, looks like our board is working. So replacing two chips on the board solved the problem. And now the conclusion. Replacement of the chips on the daughter board resolved the problem, so the controller now is working. Again, thanks for watching. This is Eugene, and uh, see you next time.